The following message by Pastor Dennis Clark and Dr. Jennifer Clark is brought to you by Full Stature Ministries and its supporters. For more information about Full Stature Ministries, please visit forgive123.com. That's forgive123.com. say this is not the time for distractions this is the time says the Lord to get serious about the pursuit of me the Lord says for I am surely coming the Lord says and I'm going to shake up things I'm going to stir hearts the Lord says but first I'm preparing a people the Lord says I am preparing vessels that will be ready to hold the weight of my glory so the Lord says This is not the time to slack off. This is the time to double and triple and quadruple your pursuit of me. The Lord says, for surely I've heard your songs. I've heard the prayers within your songs. I've heard your prayers that are spoken by your heart, says the Lord. And I am surely coming with the answer, the Lord says, for I am the answer, the Lord says, and you shall know me. This is also the time of overflow. This is the time where I tip tip the bowls of your prayers that have been accumulated over a period of time, where you have sought me with all of your heart and with diligence, and you've not lost nor fainted. The Lord says, I'm about to pour out my spirit upon all flesh in a new and a significant way, for I am going to bring forth those things which are old and those things which are new, the fresh as well as the familiar. And I'm going to bring them together and unite them as a flow of a mighty river. And I'm going to bring you as a people into a jet stream of my purposes. Things that are going to be accelerated at a much rap- more rapid pace. And there's going to be much less effort and a great deal more redemptive accomplishments in the days ahead. In Jesus' name. Amen. Are there any first time visitors here? I know of one. Please stand. And what's your name? My name's Karen. Karen. Karen, I hear the Lord say that he's going to shift some things around in your life. And the Lord says he's going to make you a little bit uncomfortable at times. The Lord says this is the time of stretching. This is the time of preparation. But the Lord is preparing you for what lies ahead. So the Lord says, don't kick against the pricks, the Lord says, because I will give you a witness of my spirit that I'm the one doing the moving. I'm the one doing the shifting. The Lord says, just go with the flow, daughter. Just go with the flow, for I'm bringing good things your way. And y'all are first-time visitors? Tom, is that your daughter? Okay. Okay. Now, your name again? Tom. Tom. Tom, I hear the Lord say that the Lord is going to cause you to do more traveling. And the Lord says things that you might have traveled for in the past are becoming are going to become a thing of the past. The Lord says because he's going to be the wind that blows the sails of your life, the Lord says, and you will go by the wind of my spirit. The Lord says he's taking you into a new place. He's taking you into a place of depth with him. The Lord says he is going to restore old truths and make you make you know them in your heart. And the Lord says when he comes to visit you, The Lord says you will understand far more than you understand now because the Lord is bringing a day of visitation into your life and he is going to change things drastically, 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 says the Spirit of God. And your name? Rachel. Rachel, I hear the Lord say that he is with you and he loves you very dearly. And the Lord says there's some things you may not understand now. There may be some things you won't understand until you get to heaven. But the Lord wants you to know that he is with you in a very unique and special way. And he is ordering your steps. And he's going to 
take you into new experiences with him. The Lord says he's going to open up revelation. He's going to open up the supernatural in your life. And the Lord says what once might have seemed like a strange thing or an uncommon thing, the Lord says he's going to make commonplace for you. And the Lord says he's going to reveal himself to you. He's going to cause things to come alive that have seemed dormant. And the Lord says he's going to bring you into a time of great joy, a time of great, great joy. And the Lord says you don't have to understand everything, just enjoy the journey. The word that I got before Jennifer shared was that, yes, he is real. And the questions that you've had in your heart and in your mind about spiritual things, God is going to reveal himself to you, even this day. And your name? Reg, I hear the Lord say that there are some things that you have read in your Bible that you don't quite understand, and there's some things you've been seeking God about. And the Lord says he's heard your prayers, he knows the questions you're asking, and he's going to give you the answers you seek. But the Lord says the most important thing is the revealing of himself. So the Lord says to put that first, to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all those other things will be added to you. But the Lord says this is a time of priority, priority, priority. And the Lord says there will be a great reward for your seeking. And your name? Johnny D. Johnny D., I hear the Lord say that he's play, God has placed some gifts inside of you, and it's time, times it feels like a fire burning in your belly. The Lord says, but son, I want you to go with me, to go in my cadence and my timing, to not get out ahead of me and not lag behind me. The Lord says he's teaching you how to let your steps be ordered, and he's rearranging some priorities in your heart because the Lord says he has some things for you that the Lord says will be so awesome to you you will say wow if I had only known if I had only known well the Lord says you shall indeed know and the Lord says let me lead you into that which is your the deepest seeking of your heart I just love the confirmation and prophetic word because all that I had before Jennifer shared was that God said in the times past I had to guide you with a cattle prod. I had to, I had to make you go this way and you make you go that way. But God says now is the day and the time where I'm going to guide you with my eye. And you're going to move into a new sensitivity to where you're going to have the green light and the red light on the inside of you and you're not going to override the red light but you're going to go full force, full speed ahead, fifth gear at the green light. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Okay. And um, while that was going on, I assume our children have already left for Sunday school. The children have left the building. Well, not no, quite. Not quite. They've okay. left this room and All gone right. to another room. That's good. We didn't want to lose them. No. Okay. Wanted to remind you about the practice of the presence of God book there at our book table. This is an um, updated edition and Sid Roth took the um, book, The Practice of the Presence of God by the 16th century monk, Brother Lawrence, and he updated it by including a third section in the book, which is the how-tos, because he said that when he was a, a new believer that he read Brother Lawrence, but he was frustrated because he said, how do you do that? And so the, the section that's added now, we wrote a section telling you how to do that. And he is using this as an, evangel, an evangelistic tool um, to Jewish millennials, 21% of whom believe that Jesus is their Messiah, even though they have not yet been born again. So this is going to go out to those who are hungry Something for their Messiah like and teach them se over 700,000. And this will teach them how to get to know their Messiah. So we're excited about that. And also, Sid's it's The Supernatural Bible is now available on his website if you're interested Actually, in getting one. Actually, it's a special one. right now, too. There is a special, so you get a discounted rate if you buy two. And it comes with a book uh, by Tim Sheets about what is coming, what God is getting ready to do in the days ahead. Okay. 
There's two reasons you should get that Bible. One, because Dennis and Jennifer have an article in it. <laughs> right. But the other reason is just think, we're going to get one for all of our leaders, but if everyone had that Bible, I could say, turn to page 1229, and everybody would know how to do it. And we'd be on the same page. <laughs> all right, if that's not good enough reason, then find your own reason. And we want to remind you about Studio Tuesday over at the headquarters building. Um, it's a very special opportunity that the Lord has opened to us. And the tapings of that show will go on Sid Ross Middle East TV. As well as and all over, uh, all over the Middle East, um, around the world, the entire nation of Africa has opened up for Sid's satellite, for his network. So exciting things going on, but our burden, as you may know, is not just winning people to the Lord, it's discipling people. Because the Lord's commission was go and make disciples of the nations, immersing them in the reality of God himself. That's right. And that's what we're doing. That's what we're taping on Tuesday nights. And come out and be part oh, of that. Well, this Tuesday night is going to be, oh, I'm like, you'd have to come. <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell you. But it's going to be really good. Okay, okay. did you want me to share this at the yes. end? No, now. Now? Uh, okay. I'm going to share this in advance. Uh, we went to Sid's taping this week. His live shoot the live on shoot. Thursday. You can see it on his Facebook, it's on YouTube. Um, but uh, uh, we were there in the shoot and, oh, I'm gonna share one testimony. Uh, he didn't share it on the TV broadcast for obvious reasons, but he did share it with the audience, so I'm gonna share it with the audience. Anyway, um, he, had a, uh, he had a person who was a renowned evangelist uh, going through a hard time. This was Thursday morning. Thursday morning. And the morning. shoot was that afternoon. The, sh and the shoot was that afternoon. Um, was, was in pain for like two years solid to the point that it just despaired of, of life itself, you know. Severe pain, like I can't take it anymore, that kind of pain. And two was considering years. suicide. And he got wind of this and he called him and it didn't really give him a heads up that he knew, but basically he just said, you know, have, you know, how you doing? It's bad, pain's bad, and everything. And he just said, "Did you, uh, have you forgiven everybody?" Well, I can't think of anybody. Can't hear you. I didn't do. He said, "I can't uh, think of anybody." And uh, so Sid said, "I did what the Clarks taught me." <laughs> he said, "I had him say." Now, now, when you have a seasoned minister, it's kind of hard to tell them anything new because what's a seasoned minister? Oh, yeah, I already know that. Okay. So he, he, asked him, so he, he said, said, well, what about yourself? He said, what about yourself? And he goes, oh, I don't know. And he says, do this. And that's, a, that's a good approach for, so you avoid the, I already know that. He said, do this. I want you to just imagine that you're going to move from your head like an old-fashioned well with the crank, and you're just going to drop that bucket down into your spirit. And when you think of yourself, what do you feel anyway? Oh, yuck, bad. He said, then receive forgiveness from the Jesus down in your heart. What do you feel now? Joy. He received forgiveness for himself. The judgments he's made against himself and he was instantly healed of two years severe pain, instantly. Isn't that beautiful? Now, um, Jennifer, you wanna share a little bit about the two guests? Uh, by the way, one of them is gonna be in Israel with us to right, baptize right. in the Jordan. Why don't you cover a little bit of the details? Okay, and we're going to be praying with you at the, at the end, but Pastor Todd Smith, Dawsonville, Georgia, had met with a group of intercessors weekly, just hungry for God, just the reality of God himself, not praying for revival, not praying for anything, but for God. And on, um, he'd been on a 21-day fast this past January, and 
God gave him a vision of the church's baptistry and the pool, which was then empty. He saw in the vision, he saw it full, except that he saw fire flickering on the surface. There was a strip of fire on top of the water. And shortly after that, things started happening when people were baptized. Physical healings, lots of physical healings, um, and a lot of them medically documented that a healing had taken place. Documentation this thick. But also, not just physical healing, but a deep work of restoration and repentance in the hearts of people who were baptized, and they'd come up shaking and under the power of and God. And from all over, no matter where this was done, no matter what church, the minute they set foot in the water, they started confessing sin that had been hidden, sin that had been just without even anticipating it, they just started saying it. Addicts were set free. It's, um, it's been pretty amazing. But he's coming to Israel when we go on Sid Roth's tour in April, and he is going to be baptizing in the Jordan. So that's pretty exciting. The good part is this works no matter no matter where he went, right? And other people's churches. It wasn't limited to you got to go to his place. And his happen. his elders and pastoral team there, the same things happen when they baptize. So, but we, um, at the end, everyone received a cloth that's been dipped in the baptism waters. So we have that. And then there was another guest, um, Johnny Taylor, and a man from his church, Jerry Pierce. This is from um, Douglasville, Georgia. And in, on January 27th, 2017, Jerry noticed oil in his Bible and it started I think Psalm 39 and then it kept and then it started spreading all the way from Genesis to Revelation and then the Bible started dripping oil and he put it in a Ziploc uh, bag but then had to move it to a container because it's producing gallons and gallons and gallons of oil and so the what? Lord says don't sell it give it away and when it got to the maps in the back of the Bible, so saturated, there was a, wasn't there a heart over Israel or something yes. like that? Mm -hmm. Th those of you that are in Sid's ministry, and you know this firsthand, stand up. You've heard this. Okay, that's Krista, Shane, Victoria. If we mess it up, you just correct us later, <laughs> all right? Okay. They all, they've all work for Sid, so they are well aware of this. And he well had a binder full of healings and miracles that have taken place um, due to this oil. There you was can one watch the, you can watch the program on right. Sidra Facebook is the easiest way to find and or the, YouTube. And they had the Bible there in a, a great big huge container full of oil and the oil never stops flowing. They have at this point filled over 400,000 I believe bottles of this oil and given them away and it's the oil really just right. keeps coming. So, and, and what's interesting is people from my generation have been in ministry 40 years. Uh, we say, well, what's the purpose of, this is the theologian part in all of us, what's the purpose of the gold dust? What's the purpose of the oil? And I like the one pastor's answer. You know what's beautiful about this multiplication of oil and the thing is that people have a tendency to attack the messenger with anything supernatural. Mm -hmm. But what do you do when something's happening and nobody's participating in it? They're all observers. Then you've got to argue with, and they send it away to scientists. Here, I've got it right here. Okay. Um, to have it analyzed, a chemical engineer with over 30 years of experience paid several thousand dollars to have the oil analyzed. The analysis came back saying that the oil has some of the characteristics of mineral oil, but it's not mineral oil. It's not an oil produced by humans. It's not a synthetic. The report did not offer a conclusion as to what the oil actually is, and in fact used the word unexplainable in its conclusion. Two other paid studies were performed with similar results. The Chris bottom said. line is that this is an oil like no other oil that's ever been examined. 
The one man's got, he wears one and he prays for people and he's got it around his neck. And it's been two years and it's never diminished. And the oil has its own website. His yeah. name is flowinginoil.org that gives background information and also many testimonies of healings listed on a testimony page. And there are numerous videos of the oil that you can find on YouTube. And it's not just a one-time creative miracle, but a continual miracle we can see with our own eyes. And he said that the pastor said he believes that there are three basic reasons why the oil is flowing at this time. Since the oil is flowing from a Bible, the miracle is an endorsement of the Bible as God's written revelation. And by the way, the Bible is completely intact. The, the um, pages and the places where there's a marker on verses, it's not, it's not um, smeared. The ink is still sharp on it. The binding is still perfectly good. Um, Jerry Pierce, the one who's the owner of the Bible, reached into the um, tub of oil and bring, brought the Bible out and showed it and flipped through the pages. And, and like Victoria said, it doesn't even look like it's wet, right? The employees got to see it close up. And the, now if you know yourself, if you put ink and you underline in your Bible, you soak it in anything and that's, it's going to be a mess. This thing is like it's like it's brand new and unaltered. And he, he just pulls it out and squeezes it and opens the pages. And you can see where he's underlined stuff. And he said this miracle and one man is a test is a, an encouragement to our faith. We had, the, the fellow that was sitting in front of us, we got a heads up, was the worship leader from that church. And he was the one telling us about tests, even stuff that wasn't covered in the program. <coughs> and uh, because they kept testing it, they didn't satisfy with that one test with one engineer. They went three times, and, it, and the test came back just better and better and better with explanations. But um, <clears throat> one of the things that, that to me was so profound was that he was saying that, that if you could see the excitement in this worship leader that goes to this church, because it's such a faith builder to see these things are happening, but I still like the part that it doesn't have any human involvement that you could point the finger. And if God was saying, you know what, throughout history when he does something through a man, the man usually gets attacked, right? But he said, God wants to begin to show some signs and wonders that nobody can answer for, nobody can understand, and, and literally show you that there is a supernatural realm that's above and beyond yours, all right? And what? So we do have some How many oil would like to, to be anointed with this? Uh huh. Well, we're going to get you prayed for today before we even start. Krista, could you come up and share? Krista's an employee there, and she got her, all the employees got their vial of oil and their cloth. Right, everybody at the, um, at the taping, everybody in the audience got oil and a cloth. Yep. So hundreds of people left there with it, but she's got a current testimony with it. So we got our oil on Thursday. We have a kitty that had surgery on her ear already, and it didn't work. And she was scheduled for surgery again on Friday. Well, I decided I was going to anoint her ear and see if it worked. Well, the next morning, her ear had gone down to about a third of what it had been. So I canceled her surgery, and we've been anointing her every day. And every day, her ear has been going down more and more. Because it was infection and a, and a it was an ear hematoma. So it doesn't tend to go away by itself. No, I like that. <laughs> Don't you love that? I feel good. And what, Yay God. and what I love what they're attesting to is not just physical healings. There's emotional healing. Oh, I got two microphones. I'm amplified today. Huh? But I don't even want to start without praying for people. Come on up, and as fast as I pray for you, go back and sit down so I can cover everybody in a short period of time. Let me start with our guest here, okay, and then go immediately back. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord. Yes. But you know what? Thank you. Uh, yes. My bottle's going to be full by the time I'm done. And this can be emotional, it can be mental, it can be, it can be physical. We're just going to welcome the miracle worker, right? That's all we're going to do. Miracle worker, touch me, Lord Jesus, touch me. Just touch me in whatever way you see fit. And email testimonies later. 
emailed all testimonies, physical, emotional, mental. He was saying there was financial healings. People were getting, uh, all of a sudden, miracles were happening in the financial area. So don't limit it to any category. Children, home, family life, there you go. Relationships. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Lord. More, more. Two, double, double dose. <laughs> Health and healing flowing. Thank you, Jesus. Now, you are obligated. This is free, of course. We want, we want documentation for any kind of major changes. The worship leader was telling me one lady had her lung removed and she was getting congestion in the other, room, other lung and it was dangerous because you only had one lung. She went to the doctor and he said, your lung's fine, both of them. Praise the Lord. Huh? Amen. Both of them. She didn't only had one, but she'd had a, she had she'd two. She had her one lung removed. Lung? And it grew back. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. This is the best one to anoint. Oh, yes. It's so special. That's special. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. They had x-rays with them of a... Um, of a woman who'd had multiple cancerous growths in her body. They had the x-ray before she was healed and after she was healed, and they showed that to us. We love messing with those doctors. <laughs> oh. Well, Terry, you messed with the doctors, haven't you? Yeah. Sometimes they have trouble believing their own reports. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Increase, increase. Increase. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Let's thank you, Jesus. Let's welcome Jesus the healer in you to rise up. And that's merely a point of contact that Jesus the healer is in you. And he's rising up and you're just coming into that place of agreement. Thank you, Lord. Increase, increase. Uh, thank you. Mm. Mm -mm. Mm. Here's a nice anointing in here just right now. I, th I should do. Um, I should do prophetic preaching, which is like one long prophetic word. <laughs> oh, thank you, Lord. I love it. I love it. Thank you, Lord. Increase, increase. Hmm. We were just talking that I believe that we're on the threshold of something that we saw when we traveled on several occasions. Once in Great Barrington, once in, uh, uh, what was that, Bristol, Connecticut, or? In Greer, Great Barrington. Greer, South Carolina, where the weight came down. And we saw in, in a particular case in Great Barrington, there was some unruly children. Of course, they, they go to church too, you know. So There were some unruly children running around, and the weight of God's presence came down. The worship team didn't want to worship. They put their instruments down, and the unruly kids sat down by themselves without anybody telling them to do it. That's the kind of presence we're going to have in the days ahead. And that presence, when it comes down, now, I'm welcoming it today, but when that kind of weight comes down, there's also a, a surfacing, and I'm seeing this happening in that baptismal. It's also surfacing any junk that's not been dealt with. You better deal with it now. To make ready a people prepared, it's turning of the hearts of the fathers to the children and, the, and also the turning of the hearts of the children to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared. And... I'm convinced that all the good that's going to happen still needs a people prepared. So I think, I think I'm going to cover some of that today. But oh, oof. I would just love to pray for people. Mm. We could do either one. Oh.
Well, if there's anybody who wants prayer before I get started, come on up right now. Because I, come on up. I just want to pray before we even get started. I just want, this is, it feels too good. This feels too good. We're just going to release that anointing. Oh, there's a nice anointing. Thank you, Jesus. Chew, cow, let the breath. Terry, I want you to stay up here with me and just want somebody. Oh, there we go, Terry. Almost lost her. Uh, we did lose her. That's good yielding, by the way, Kathy. That's, uh, that's nice. That's your Jesus in there. Barbara, there you go. You're yielding. I'm receiving that anointing. I'm receiving. This is even better. This is even better because you're, you're taking your time and you're receiving. Very good, Barbara. Yeah. Remember, you receive from down in the gut. That's where you yield. That's the door of the heart. I'm going to move down this way a little bit. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. Just yield. There you go. Very good. Drinking it in. Drink it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm. Oh, health and healing. Just drink it in. Yield. Open the door down low and yield. The presence is increasing up here. Welcome it. And don't any of you ever do what Charles Finney did and said, I can't take it anymore. You just keep saying, I want more. Increase, increase, increase. Increase. We're going to lose her. We're also going to lose Heather. Someone stand behind her in Jesus' name. Could I have a man stand behind her? someone? There you go. The Holy Spirit's all over you. See, you don't need me to lay hands on you. Jesus is here. Very good. Keep going. Don't quit. Terry, you stay with me. That's it. You're hanging by a thread. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Increase, increase. Yield. Oh, that's... Oh, Lord. Oh, we desperately need intimacy with Him. Increase, increase, increase. Increase, increase. The Spirit of God's all over you. That's good, that's good. Keep going, Heather. You haven't diminished anything. It's in, still increasing. Increase, increase. Same with you right now. In Jesus' name, I'll just take it all. We're going to lose glory out if you don't stand there. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. we got to train catchers to discern what's going on, don't you think? <laughs> Get out of your head. Pay attention to your gut. If all of a sudden you feel a whoosh, that's somebody letting go. <laughs> her eyes are closed. She don't even know I'm pointing to her, but she's going to lose it. Thank you. How many know how to discern from here? If you're at peace, you can feel who's yielding and who's not. Everybody can do that if you get out of your head. Oh, Gloria. Gloria and Heather, I think you're getting a special bath right now. <laughs> Jesus' name, increase, increase. Okay, thank you. Whoa, Colleen. Very good. That's the joy of the Lord. And see, and basically, basically what you just did, you caught that from Heather because, yeah, move forward. When you're open, you have a tendency to bear witness to what's going on in the atmosphere. Colleen got a little shot of joy bubble. Thank you, Lord. So did you. You got it. You got it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, there it is. There it is, too. Right now, one, two, three. All have a, an expression of a bubble of joy. That's the fruit of the Spirit. That's not a mystery. That's the fruit of the Spirit. Uh, oh, now you shoo. Shoo. So, thank you, Lord. Now that peace, yours is changing to peace and it's going to guard your heart and your mind and you're going to wear it like a canopy the rest of the day. 
the rest of the day just wear it, say, thank you, Lord. And if I even come out from under that peace, he doesn't take his peace away. You have to move outside of it with certain thoughts, feelings, or choices. But I'm going to stay there in Jesus. There you go. Oh, you own it now. He is your Lord, Adonai. Uh, increase, 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 in, increase. Peggy, let's just yield. Yielding is like breathing in from the gut. It's like opening and welcoming. Actually, how you got saved, you opened the door of your heart. Are you, I'm, you know what I'm thinking is, I want you to receive forgiveness for any time you've ever blamed yourself. Can we do that? I receive forgiveness right now because you could even receive better if you weren't, if you weren't saying it's not going to work for me or other people, but not me or something, anything like that. I receive forgiveness for talking bad about myself. Ever. 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 Thank you, Lord. There you go. We're just we're breaking, we're breaking a a, a, a tormenting uh, spirit that's given you a lot of. Problems. You've got to remember that the source of stuff that is ungodly that goes into your head, that's the forever loser. That's what the one guy called Lucifer or the devil. He said, the forever loser. Say that back with me. The forever loser. All right? So we don't want to listen to thoughts coming into our head from the forever loser. Right? If it's not scriptural, the new creation you doesn't, the new creation you loves God and loves his word. I receive forgiveness for any negative thinking toward myself. And I believe there's going to be people physically healed as you forgive yourself. So if you're sitting in your chair, you might think you've forgiven everybody, but say, God, how does it feel about myself? Drop down your spirit. And if it doesn't feel peaceful about yourself, receive forgiveness because you're clean. That's the heavenly record. You're clean. The historical record, eh, that'll always be there. Who cares? If it doesn't have power, I don't care. Increase, increase, increase. And just let that joy be a conduit that flows out to other people. Cup runneth over. You're going to be basically a demonstration of that concept in Jesus' name. Or just release physical healing and physical healing, health, wholeness, just a fresh, re new refreshing in Jesus' name. Let the oil of His Spirit. Isn't it interesting in both those examples, one is water and one is oil? Huh? Typically typifying the work of the Spirit of God, water and oil, the oil of anointing and the water of the Word. Shoo, there it is, very good. Oh, I like the way my people yield. If I was at another church, I'd have a hard time, but every single person knows how to receive here. Yeah. Actually, it makes it kind of boring. <laughs> you commune too easily with the Lord. We will visit another church, and we teach them how to drop down, deal with their emotions, the whole place is sobbing. But the sad part is, is they shouldn't be like that. I should be having enough walk with the Lord to that doesn't take place. Thank you, Jesus. Increase, increase. Whoa, we got you. Whoa. And here's the here's the interesting thing. In the old time church, they say going down was the was the end result. No, no. Actually, the anointing is increasing while you're down. I used to see people fall down, get up, fall down, get up. They kept wanting to fall down. The point is, when you fall down, it fall down. It's pointing to a higher truth. That higher truth is that I am incubating. I am yielding like never before. He is Lord like never before. I'm being saturated and built up in Him. And the yielding is not to a man. The yielding is to the Spirit of God within. Yield right now. Yield. Yield from down here. Let me show you what it feels like. 
fall back into my hand about six inches. You feel the change down there? You feel how much more peaceful it is? All right, you don't have to fall down. I just want you to yield from the heart, not the head. Thank you. Yield and receive in Jesus' name. There, there's, there's the comfort of the Holy Spirit. Comfort me with the same comfort where I was comforted during times of affliction. There's health and healing. There you go. When I say there you go, I'm going based proportional to your yielding. Yes. Now sometimes when I'm praying for somebody and they're yielding, they go, there, there. They grab hold and stop. <laughs> All right. Don't stop just because I'm saying that. What I'm doing is I'm bearing witness with your spirit that you're doing it right. Yeah, that's yeah. I even changed my voice based on what it feels like in there. Oh, this is what it feels like to Stephen. This feels good. That's God. Hmm? Thank you, Lord. Tom, let's just say yield. Yield. That's it. That's it. Can you tell when you catch? Can you tell when you catch yourself? Like you yield and then stop yielding? Eventually you get to the place where you can be in any kind of a work situation and stay yielded to God. Even when people are arguing and fighting, you learn to stay yielded to God. Right now this is like training for reigning. This is easy. Nobody's giving you a hard time here. Yield. That's it. That, oh, that's it. Oh, we're going to lose them. When I say we're going to lose them, at some point, they don't do this. They just go, ah, oh, heck with it. <laughs> oh, just let it go. Let it go. And actually, but what does it point to? What does it point to? It points to lordship will require yielding. We live by dying, we fight by yielding. You want to win the spiritual warfare, you yield to the Jesus in you, and greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world, then you win. You say yes to God before you say no to the devil. You can't just say no to the devil, that won't work. You've got to say yes to God first. It's got to come from the new creation you, not from your head. Oh, you just hung on at the end. There. Can you tell I know what's going on in you? Hmm? If I know, here's the, here's the lesson that I want you to learn. If I know what's going on in you by discernment, discerning your human spirit, I only bear witness to the tip of the iceberg. So that means what's going on in you as an individual is your responsibility. And if you don't know what's going on in you, you're way too much of a head person. Mm -hmm. I'm only bearing witness to the tip of the iceberg. The rest of that iceberg's in you. People that are not in touch with their own makeup. Oh, that was what she let go. Oh. <laughs> Stay up here for a little while. You're enjoying this. You're enjoying God too much. This is good. Thank you, Jesus. Oh. Oh. It caught you. Oh, you're starting again. Oh, yeah. You should do this. Husbands and wives do this with each other. Close your eyes. And then everybody has their eyes closed because discernment does not go by body language. Discernment goes by the impression down here. Close your eyes. Face each other. Do this with your friend. And then you do that and they will be able to tell. Just like you can tell when somebody's got a wall and they're in your face and they're pushing. You can feel that push, can't you? That's flesh. That's witchcraft. That's control. Nobody likes to be pushed. Even if they're smiling. Have you ever had somebody smile and push? Hi, yeah, yeah. And you feel like going like this? Like, get out of my face? Thank you, Jesus. Increase, increase, increase. Yeah. Oh, there it is. Oh, that is so sweet. The fruit of the Spirit. You've got kindness flavoring your human spirit. Thank you, Jesus. And also no guile. A little bit like Jennifer's spirit. No guile, no trickery, no game playing, no manipulation. You, what you see is what you get. Oh. 
Now, in some cases, you feel like you fall forward almost a little bit. That's actually an act of submission or humility. You don't have to fall forward, but I'm just saying, some people feel that when they're going, that they go back and forth. Going forward is just an act of, I'm humbling myself before the Lord. And that sometimes the body demonstrates what you're doing internally. Thank you, Lord. Increase, 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 increase. And how about you catchers? Can you feel an anointing when you stand behind them? I always felt like the people that are catchers that just stand behind there get a double blessing. <laughs> I could... <laughs> One thing, everybody's got a free will, right? You can stay rigid or you can do like Stephen and yield really good and then say, I ain't falling down. Though. So then he stops himself. <laughs> Which is totally okay. Why? Because it's his will. Huh? We're not old-time Pentecostals that would just go, let's push him down. He's, he's, he's not cooperating. <laughs> Can you feel the presence of God? That's the important part. Can you feel it? It's very strong up here. You too? You enjoying it? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Then let's go more. Whatever you're, Here's the way I disciple Jennifer. I'm going to do it to both of you. Right now, when I say, you feel that, Jennifer? And she'd say, yeah. You feel, does it feel good, like peaceful? Yeah. Now, let the bottom fall out and go deeper. Just did it. This is not something you figure out in your head. You're, you're squinching your eyes. That's a bad sign. And you're fig <laughs> you're think you're if you're doing that, you're not doing it from the heart. Yield, feel the peace. Nod your head when you feel nice peace. Now go deeper. Let it go. There you go. They both did it. And then I would tell Jennifer, you feel that little, that little, because she, she wouldn't show on her face because she was pretty much a head person. I said, that, that's the joy of the Lord. And then the value of this is once you give a person some corroboration, then they don't need instruction anymore because now they've got their own subjective. When I feel peace, I say, oh, that's God. That's the peace of God. When I feel that little... And men have learned to dial down the emotions. Good could be joy of the Lord. When, the, when a man says, I feel good, <laughs> that, that could very well be the joy of the Lord because we've been taught boys don't cry, boys don't this, boys don't that. And the church has helped fortify that we don't need feelings. Now, right now, if I went just by the flavor of Aaron's spirit, it's a little bit like intoxication. Am I right, Aaron? A little bit groggy-like? Yeah. Yep. And he's, he's out. Oh, we use up the whole time now. You're going to have to come Tuesday night. Get, Any questions? Why don't we do questions and answers for the rest? Any questions on what this is going on? Because you don't see this when we traveled. That was, most people didn't see it. Any questions on discernment? No questions. Everybody knows everything. <laughs> All right. Then let's do this. this. These two sections here stand up. These two sections stand up. You face that section. Because one of the missing ingredients in understanding the spiritual church is we've been taught you got to confess it, decree it, declare it, and all of that is valid. However, what we failed is that you emanate even when you're not talking. You can release love from the belly without talking. And you will feel the anointing in the room change. I want everybody on this side out of your belly, let a river of love flow. This will keep you from walking in rejection, too, by the way. Be, just release without words. I'm releasing. I'm opening my heart and letting Jesus flow out. You people, look at this. These people rocking in the spirit over here. You receive from here. All we're doing is receiving love. You release love. Oh, 
Oh. Now that's more anointed than my sermons. Okay, switch. This side here, you're releasing like a Holy Ghost fire hose. Out of my belly flows rivers of loving water, and I just open the door of my heart and let it gush out toward these people on this side. You open your heart and receive. Drink. There you go. Do you know that the body is supposed to give and receive? This is giving and receiving experientially. Does that feel good? Hmm? Does that feel good? So you can do it with each other. You don't need me. I'm going to go home. Uh, all right, now face, face me. Everybody face the front and worship without words. You worship heavenward from the belly, heavenward. And see if you can do two things, like chew gum and walk at the same time. See if you can worship heavenly and still pay attention to the atmosphere that's in the room. If you're watching on YouTube, you just do the same thing, wherever you're at. How many can feel the increase in the anointing in the room? Nod your head. Where's that coming from? That is not coming from heaven. That is coming from believers. A corporate anointing is what's flowing out of the hearts of the people present. All right. Uh, here's the test. You know, aren't we supposed to test the spirit? Here's the way you test your own spirit. Do I feel refreshed? That's a sign of genuine worship and genuine ministry. If someone ever prays for you and they, they do deliverance or whatever on you, if you don't feel freer or lighter or closer to God, I don't take that word that I got ministry. I want to feel refreshed, lighter, different. I want a, a subjective experience of freedom. I don't, I, don't, I don't buy old time school where they just lay hands on you and say, you're free, you're free, by faith, by faith. If I leave the same way I came in, that's not faith. Faith is the substance of the no-so and an awareness, an assurance. Isn't that the definition of your salvation? The assurance, guess what? That's a spiritual perception. That's a feeling. Uh, I use that word, feeling. But there's physical feeling, like you stub your toe. That's physical feeling. Then there's emotional feeling. Those are emotions. But then there's spiritual feelings. And you need to know those because guess why? God put a conscience in you as the voice of your spirit. And if you can't feel a buzz or a check in your spirit, you're in bad shape. Because that's a feeling. But it's spiritual, conscience. Conscience is down here. And it goes, you don't want to do that, Dennis. I don't want to override if it's going, that's my red light. And if you can't feel that, there's something severely wrong with you. Maybe your conscience is seared beyond repair or something. I don't know. Some of you have pillows on your conscience. Let's remove pillows right now. God, when I married Jennifer, God showed me, he says, this woman's been hurt enough in her life. She's had enough abuse. And I said, God, if I ever hurt her, knowingly or unknowingly, make my conscience shout. And the first time that something happened and she got her feelings hurt, I felt like a donkey kicked me in the gut. Some of you need donkeys to kick you in the gut, don't you? Let's pray that prayer. <laughs> Take the barnacles or whatever they are off my conscience. I want to move and walk in a super sensitive conscience to where I am clean on the inside because I'm commanded. The end of the charge, scripturally, is to love out of a pure heart. Pure meaning no double-mindedness. Pure meaning single. 
pure heart, a good conscience, and a sincere faith. No fake it till you make it stuff. Uh -uh. Sincere faith is an inner know-so. I know that I know. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So be, tell me honestly, you feel refreshed? Yes. You didn't get a sermon. You got Jesus. Oh. Amen. Amen. Let's receive another offering and <laughs> start all over again. No, you're, you're dismissed. Seal this work by the power of the Holy Spirit. May these people leave refreshed, encouraged, comforted, exhorted. Amen. You've been listening to Pastor Dennis Clark and Dr. Jennifer Clark of Full Stature Ministries at Forgive123.com. Full Stature Ministries reserve all copyright protections under applicable law. Our copyright policy is available at our website, Forgive123.com. For more information about Full Stature Ministries and additional life-transforming materials, please visit Forgive123.com.